Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken, and we're back in chapter one looking at exploring data. This time we're in section 1.3, describing quantitative data with numbers. And what this is all about, this section is putting together numerical summaries that help us to understand the data a little bit better. Just like in section two, we were graphing, and in section one, we were graphing different types of data to be able to understand it better. So the learning objectives are to calculate measures of center, the mean and the median, and we probably already know how to do that. We want to be able to calculate and interpret measures of spread, and the measures of spread that we're going to be working with this year are the range, the interquartile range, or IQR, and the standard deviation. We want to be able to choose the most appropriate combination of center and spread measurements for different situations. We also want to be able to identify outliers using the 1.5 times IQR rule. And then we're going to be calculating what is called the five number summary. With the five number summary, we're going to be able to make and interpret box plots of quantitative data. And last of all, we want to be able to use appropriate graphs and along with numerical summaries to be able to compare distributions. So let's take a look. We know that the mean, again, we've been using it for a long time. The mean is sometimes called the arithmetic average or the arithmetic mean. And the symbol that we're going to use for the mean of a, a sample is going to be this X with the little line over it. That is called an X bar. And we know the formula for that. We add up all the numbers and we divide by the number of numbers. Now, if we want to put this in a formal formula, as we see on our AP Statistics formula sheet that we'll be able to use on our exam at the end of the year, we're going to put it in summation notation. And that looks like this. X bar is equal to the sum of all the independent or the individual observations divided by the number of numbers. So that is the mean, one of the measurements of center. Another measure of center that we use a lot is called the median, and the median is the center value of a set of numbers. And most importantly with the median, we need to first put the numbers in order. We do not need to do that when we're finding the mean, but we do need to do that when we're finding the median. So that's always the first thing that we do. And the median is going to be that center value. So half the numbers are below it and half the numbers are above it. What we would do to find the median of a distribution is first order the numbers from least to greatest. Second, if we have an odd number of points of data or pieces of data, the center value is going to be our median. But if we have an even number of pieces of data, we're going to find the two center values and we're going to take the average or the mean of those two center values. And that number, even though it may not be a part of our data, may not be in our data, but the halfway point between our two center pieces of data, that will be the median for the data set that has an even number of values. Here's an example, and we have 20 pieces of data here. You can see, first of all, they're not in order. So the very first thing that we need to do is put them in order. Oh, sorry, that was for the median. <laughs> <laughs> and here we're finding the mean. Sorry about that. So again, to find the mean, we're going to add them all together and divide by the number of numbers. So we end up with 31.25 minutes. And here we've put the data in order using a stem plot. So we are going to look for the center two values one in the ordered set of data. And that means it's going to be between the 10th and the 11th pieces of data, and we're going to find the average of those two numbers. So the key tells us 4 line 5 represents 45 minutes, so 20 line 0 is 20 minutes, 20 line 5 is 25 minutes, so we're going to find the average between 20 and 25 minutes, and that's going to give us our median. Now I just want you to notice, even though the mean and the median are both measuring the center of this data, they are very far apart. And we need to think a little bit about why that is. And the, the nature of how they are calculated is at the root of their difference. So we're going to talk more about that in a minute. 
Right now, we're going to move on to looking at measures of spread. We already talked about the range, the maximum minus the minimum. Now we're going to talk about the interquartile range. And I want you to see the root word in there, quarter or quartile. We know that that means four. So what's going to happen is we're actually going to take all of our data. And again, we're going to put it in order, just like we do for the median, for finding the median. And we're going to find the median. Then with the lower half of the data, all the numbers below the median, we're going to find the median of the lower half. And then we're going to find the median of the upper half. The lower half center is going to be called the Q1 or the quartile one. The upper median is going to be called the Q3. So we're actually going to have three different locations in our data that are going to be noteworthy. That's on the inside. And that's in addition to the minimum and the maximum that are also noteworthy. So once again, we're going to put the numbers in order and we're going to find the quartile one or Q1. That's going to be the bottom quarter of the data. So even though we officially refer to the median of the bottom half of the data as the Q1, the bottom quartile is from the minimum to the Q1. The second quartile goes from the Q1 to the median. The third quartile is going to go from the median to the Q3, or that can also be thought of as the center value of the top half of data. And then in order to find the interquartile range, what we're going to do is we're going to take the value of the Q3 and subtract from it the value of the Q1, interquartile range. Another way to look at this is the, the range of the middle 50% of the data. And middle 50 is a big thing. A lot of colleges put on their websites, they publish information about the SAT scores of their middle 50 of the freshman class. So we can talk about that a little bit more in class if you have some questions. Let's go back to our example. Here we are again with our travel times for the 20 New Yorkers. Going to do, first of all, of course, is put that data in order. Then we're going to find the median and in the bottom half of the data and in the top half of the data, we're going to find the center values. So if you remember when we found the median for the 20 numbers to begin with, we had to go halfway between 20 and 25, the 10th and the 11th pieces of data in the ordered set of data. So we know that our median is 22.5. Now, if we look at the bottom half of the data, what we see is that there are 10 or an even number of pieces below the median and 10 pieces of data above the median. So we're gonna again have to find the two center values. So the center value of five through 20 is gonna be at the 15 and 15. The two center values from 25 to 85 is gonna be between 40 and 45. So the median is between 20 and 25 or 22.5. The Q1 is the average of 15 and 15 or 15. And the Q3 is the average of 40 and 45 or 42.5. To find the IQR, we just subtract Q3 minus Q1. It is a range of the middle 50% of data. And it's probably very easy to see this in this ordered set of data. So we're going to be asked to interpret almost all the time in AP statistics. And in this case, the range of the middle half of travel times for New Yorkers in the sample is 27.5 minutes. All right. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing. We want to be able to identify when we have pieces of data that are really outside the pattern, that are really kind of like they don't belong. They're really different from the remainder of the data. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this rule 
in order to determine what the range of acceptable values are that are not outliers. And that's what we're going to find is basically a threshold. So the way that we're going to calculate it is we're going to, first of all, find the interquartile range, which of course we've already done in this example of the 20 pieces of New York travel times. And then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that IQR times 1.5. We're going to, on the low end, then subtract Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. And that is going to give us the low value. So if we have any pieces of data that are less than 20, negative 26.25, they would be considered outliers. On the upper end of the data, we're going to take the Q3 and add to that 1.5 times IQR, and that's going to give us our upper threshold. So in this case, if there are any values in our data above 83.75, then we're going to consider those outliers. Notice in our data, we're back with our stem plot. We did have one value. The maximum value is above our upper threshold. So 85 is an actual outlier in this set of data. So 85 minutes of travel time is far above the pattern of the other, the rest of the distribution for travel time. That brings us to the five number summary. And the five number summary is exactly what it sounds like. There are five numbers that can describe a data set. And we're going to start with what we just did, finding the median, the Q1, and the Q3. That's three numbers right there. If we add to those the minimum and the maximum, we've got five numbers that give us a lot of information about the distribution of data. So in order, the minimum, the Q1, the median, the Q3, and the maximum. What are we going to do with those numbers? Well, you guessed it, we're going to draw another type of graph called a box plot. In this case, what we're going to do to make a box plot is we're going to first draw a scale. And that scale is going to include evenly distributed numbers, including the range from the minimum to the maximum. That's to begin with. Now, what we're going to do first is draw a box from the Q1 to the Q3. We're going to draw a line inside the box to mark the median. Then we're going to draw a dot at the minimum and a dot at the maximum, except not the outlier, if there's an outlier. The outlier is going to be marked separately, either with an asterisk or a circle. And then we're going to draw lines from the box to the minimum and another one from the box to the maximum. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. Here's our data, there's our scale, scale first, label and scale. Then we're gonna put all of those numbers onto our graph. We're gonna have the box drawn, and then we're going to draw the lines that are called the whiskers. And then we're gonna show our outlier with some sort of a special symbol that makes it stand out. Okay, this is not the end of our numerical summary section 1.3, but it is going to be the end of part one of the video. Come back and listen to the video that will finish up section 1.3 all about standard deviation. See you then.